Few people seem to know it, but the Calories In, Calories Out slogan was produced by a think tank funded by the Coca-Cola Corporation, and the real point of it is just to sell junk food. What are you eating? It's a donut stuffed with M&M's. That way when you finish the donut, you don't have to eat any M&M's. The biggest fear people seem to have about fasting is losing muscle for some reason. Yet no one seems to worry about losing brain cells. What I do is just like, like you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that one doesn't even seem to make the list. Thankfully, there's many studies showing fasts of 36 to 96 hours will not lead to the loss of any muscle whatsoever. So you can just lay that fear to rest. Now the second biggest fear is slowing the metabolism. If you've ever lost more than a couple pounds while dieting, you know what a problem this can be already. If calories in, calories out were true, you would just eat a pound less food in a week and you will lose a pound of fat. Unfortunately with dieting, it never works out that way. After the first week, your body already starts slowing the metabolism down. In reality, when you diet, you lose about 25 to 33% lean tissue. And in the long term, this will slow your metabolism quite a bit. When you fast, it's only 10% at most. And much of the time, it's actually going to be zero, especially if you're doing resistance training. It's also important to realize the real amount of energy used for movement and so on in the body is extremely low. And most of it is simply waste heat that leaves the body. This happens at the mitochondrial level and the body will actually tell the mitochondria to generate more or less waste heat as needed. While you can control the calories in, the body always controls the calories out and nothing makes it choke down on energy use like a few weeks with reduced feeding. On the other hand, when you simply fast for a few days, your body is designed to take this in stride and does not slow down the metabolism until at least 96 hours have passed. One of the deceptions that dodgy internet fitness gurus will promote is that obese people have a higher BMR than skinny people. While this is true on the surface because your body turns up the metabolism when you eat more, this doesn't address what happens when you diet. As soon as you start to diet, your body greatly turns down your metabolism, and worst of all, it starts to consume lean tissue, and in the long term, this causes extreme damage to your basal metabolism rate. Your organs actually shrink when you diet, and guess what? They don't grow back when you end the diet. They are permanently smaller and your metabolism is permanently lowered compared to what it should be at the same fat percentage. Thankfully, this doesn't happen when you fast due to the massive release of growth hormone. This doesn't have a big effect on your muscle, but it has a very large effect on some of your internal organs, which constantly shrink and grow as you age. This is also how you can permanently boost your metabolism through fasting. In long-term fasting studies, the fasters tend to gain lean tissue and a better all-around body composition. This makes sense because you are triggering growth hormone to regrow any organs that are too small for your needs and burning less lean tissue. For example, a six-month study shows that people on an alternate day fasting schedule lost an average extra pound per month of fat on the same calories as a group that ate every single day. While internet gurus are quick to point out that the difference was not statistically significant, that simply shows their lack of understanding of statistics. You could easily adjust the numbers to say there was a four-fifths pound advantage with a 95% confidence interval, or perhaps a two-third pound difference with a 99% confidence interval. So you can always arrive at something within the confidence interval that you want. And the question is whether this value is then large enough to make an actual difference. 
The size of the change is what really matters most of the time. And considering people typically become fat in the first place by gaining a few pounds per year, slowly over time, this is a gigantic advantage. One pound a month would be 12 pounds a year. That's huge. So if we adjust this down and let's say very conservatively, it would be half a pound a month. Would that really mean something? Well, that's six pounds a year on the same calories. So that's gigantic. Now a statistically significant but tiny change on the other hand really means nothing and that's why most short-term studies just mean nothing. It could be the case that this is the start of a trend that leads to a gigantic change or it could be something that totally fizzles out after another couple of weeks or anything in between. That's why these studies are basically worthless. A lot of industry-funded research, such as that of Kevin Hall, who attempts to promote calories in, calories out, are studies of just one week. He's created about a dozen one-week studies, which then get paraded around by the media as if they're meaningful. And every time some wacko like Lane Norton comes on, he's always talking about these one-week studies. But why not put the same resources into a single 12-week study? or even a couple of four-week studies. Why on earth do one-week studies over and over again? Thankfully, I'm here to sort things out. The answer is, after the first week, Psycho completely falls apart. That's really the maximum that you can pretend it's valid. Even at just two weeks, the low-carb metabolic advantage comes into play which even Kevin Hall has now admitted is a real phenomenon, even though he does still try to minimize its effect. While eating the same calories, up to 17% more fat is lost on a low-carb diet. However, it's really the long-term where calories in, calories out falls apart. And since we do have long-term studies, they supersede and negate all of these silly one-week to two-week studies. In every long-term study of a year or more, dieting simply stops working and slows the metabolism. This includes dieting on a low-carb diet as well. In the Women's Health Initiative 10-year study, women cut their calories 10%. Then they lost a few pounds and the weight loss just stopped completely and forever. They cut over a million calories from their diet for each woman and lost only a few pounds each. After six months of dieting, 95.5% of diets where 50 plus pounds were lost fail because the hunger grows more and more and the metabolism goes down and down. The only way to lose large amounts of weight without slowing the metabolism and getting progressively hungrier is through fasting 36 to 72 hours at a time, which not only burns almost pure fat, but also regenerates your lean tissue, including your organs. Varying your fasting schedule also helps a lot to keep your metabolism strong. As I said already, if you restrict calories on a daily basis for long periods, then you will slow the metabolism. And this counts for intermittent fasting too. If you constantly eat OMAD with low calories, then of course your metabolism will go down the drain. But if you vary the eating frequency and eat to satiation on whole foods, like meat and vegetables, this won't happen. A 36-hour fast every week and a couple days of OMAD per week will never ever slow your metabolism because it's just not enough time to trigger a reaction from your body. And if you eat enough food on the other days, you may even increase your metabolism over time. While you are typically told by your doctor to eat many small meals a day, this would simply never happen in nature, not year-round anyway. Your body is simply designed for frequent periods without food. And when you constantly eat, your body's immune system wastes all of its energy fighting gut pathogens instead of undoing the day-to-day -day damage of aging, which is also performed by the immune system. Fasting can also have very beneficial effects on your luteinizing hormone levels and your testosterone levels. I mentioned before that fasting regenerates the tissue of your organs and increases organ size once the fast is over, and this also applies to men's testes. Can't you just trust me on this? He said he was going through all these changes, then he went through all these changes. 
While you won't get high levels of testosterone during the fast itself, there is nothing useful for testosterone to do at this time anyway. Your body will reabsorb your sex hormones and then when you finish the fast it will regenerate all new ones. So beware the clueless or deceptive people out there will pan fasting on the basis of what happens in the middle of the fast. Once the fast is done you're going to have higher testosterone levels than ever and what's important is that this will be free testosterone instead of old and used up useless testosterone that comprises most of what we have in the body at any given time. This is also helpful for both men and women because over time any estrogen that is in the blood will morph into a damaged form of estrogen that cannot work properly and is very harmful to the body. This is especially the case for postmenopausal women. When fasting, all of this is recycled and will later be replaced by brand new and healthy estrogen, which is very important for your skin and tendons and just generally your appearance. While using logic and common sense to reason things out is an important first step in developing a theory about how things should work, science is really about trying something out, especially in the long term, and measuring the results, and then adjusting the theory based on that. That's why people are often surprised at how things work, because it doesn't work simply from logic alone. We have to actually observe all the little myriad intricate pieces of the body, find how they actually work in practice. That's why we know fasting normalizes or increases your hormones, and why we know fasting for brief periods of 36 to 96 hours won't slow your metabolism and won't burn muscle, no matter how often you do it. This is surprising to a lot of people, but that's just what your body is designed to do, and it makes sense if you think about it. That's also why we know that typical dieting schemes simply don't work for serious weight loss. For those who are 50 plus pounds overweight, they just make you hungrier and hungrier, and slow your metabolism more and more until eventually you gain all the weight back. And this happens 99.5% of the time for people who lose 50 or more pounds. And this also makes sense because in nature, if you don't have food available for an entire year, only small amounts of food, most likely what's going on is something horrible and apocalyptic like a giant drought or something. And your body wisely cuts down on its usage of energy in order to help you live. Now instead of losing the same 20 pounds over and over again, do some fasting and lose it for good. Otherwise, you're going to lose progressively more lean tissue every single time you lose that 20 pounds. 